Hi, thank you very much for coming to my, to my rant, sorry, for, to my talk. <laughs> um, so, I'm going to start with Python. So I'm an engineer, I want to send several bytes over the serial port. So in Python, I just run pip install by serial, then four lines, and I'm sending bytes over the serial port in two minutes. Okay, so then, now I'm going to do in C++. So I check Stack Overflow, and there is no actual uh, consensus here, but the most bold answer would be use Boost Asia. Then I check Boost Asia, and then I realize that it is so coupled with the icing features that I cannot just extract the low-level API uh, rubber that is actually what I, I want. So I have to download the whole Boost thing, then I have to, I, I'm lucky I'm using CMake, I can run find boost, it's, it's in this case, but I have to depend on the icing framework, and it's not exactly wh what I want. What I would expect here is something like, like this, uh, oversimplified example, where the serial port is just a wrapper of the low-level operating system calls, but nothing to do with uh, icing features. And then you can, you can build uh, icing streams, whatever, and then wrap both things together and then use an asynchrony, asynchrony uh, the serial port. So this is nothing new, of course, it's just uh, typical patterns like low copying, separation of concerns, and single responsibility. I think that um, it should be actually decoupled. I had a talk, for example, with Paul Fult, uh, saying that, uh, in fact, ACO should be split in ACO net, ACO serial, and ACO core, maybe. Uh, actually, my point is that it should be uh, not ACO serial, but something like hardware serial or something like that. What I, I'm actually looking for is this solution. There is a solution, it's not in Boost, sorry, it's in GitHub. It's just uh, the wrapper, the portable wrapper I want over uh, the serial port. Uh, and it, it's fine, it's fine, it works great. The only problem is that I have to git clone, I have to build, I have to configure my project, it's going to be different in, in Windows, Linux, and ever, I want something portable, so I have to invest some time to write my own CMake scripts or whatever to automate the task on, but depending on this serial port solution. So, uh, to be clear, uh, ACU is, is brilliant, Boost is brilliant. I hope someday I can write a code uh, half as good as, as, as ACU. I had nothing to do with that. I'm going to uh, talk a, a, about another example. For example, OpenCV is one of my, my domain problems. I love OpenCV, it's, it's brilliant software too. But when you go to the source code, you go to a third party folder, and then you have like uh, 12 libraries just copied and pasted inside OpenCV distribution. Okay. So, Okay, I only want to open a, an image file. OpenCV is too much for me, so there is a brilliant solution here. It's called the C image. Uh, it's a single header file with everything you need inside. It's a 40,000 header file. Both cases are just poor software engineering. And they are both uh, good code, brilliant code, very useful, but poor software engineering. Even, for example, uh, I love this, this library, Box2D, is also brilliant but it has embedded a copy of FreeGlut, uh, FreeGlut library for the rendering the OpenGL uh, windows. Now it's moving to a, a G, a GLFW and it's also having problems because it's just embedding a copy of, G, of the library inside the distribution. It, it makes no sense. So here's my first statement. The, the lack of a proper dependency manager or a packet manager is affecting the way we design our code. Okay, and I wouldn't say that for better, but for worse. So we have a problem here. Uh, I, I realized yesterday in the library in a week, some, someone told, okay, so one of the requirements of the library is not having many dependencies. But that, that's crazy. If it's a solvent, so solved issue, and you have it, don't reinvent the wheel. Just plug it in into your project. So it, you are going to, to repeat code if you don't depend on, on other already existing libraries uh, out there. So you can say, oh, hey, hey, wait, wait a minute. I, I have a APT, for example, or I have a whatever. Okay, we have them. So why in any other programming languages they have their own package managers? Okay, we have Python, it's taking over uh, numerical and simulation computations, um, is running very fast. We have uh, Java, 
Good, that is garbage, garbage collector, sorry. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> uh, it's, a, it's a garbage collector language, but it has a killer feature, it's Maven. Maven also sucks. It's like, uh, have you ever uh, uh, written Maven projects here? Yeah, do you like it? it sucks. No, it sucks. <laughs> yeah, but even in that case, it's a, killer, it's a killer feature, and that's one of the reasons that Java has succeeded in the, in the enterprise server environment. So we, we must know it. NPM for Node, they has just raised $8 million, like one month ago, the second financing round. Uh, it's only used by 2% of the uh, world programmers. And we are much bigger than them. So what could be the value of something similar to this in the C++, C, C and C++ environment? So hey, they are not a native language. What happens with, with native languages? So we have Go here. And it's a strong contender uh, by Google, of course. It, it works pretty well for certain things, and it's an active community. Uh, I think it's g going to be a, a good player in the server side. But uh, they have built a dependency manager solution uh, within. It's called GoGet. And it's considered uh, not as successful and not as good as, as it should be. There are a couple of articles out there that say it's harmful. I think they are working on it, and in the next release of Go, uh, it will be improved. But as today, the dependency manager of Go is not as, uh, as, as good as it should be. And Go is also criticized from the formal uh, point of view not to be a good language. But anyway, it's going to be a good co contender. So it seems that we, we shouldn't be afraid of anything. We are uh, the, most, uh, the largest community. We are almost uh, 4 million developers together, C and C++, sorry, together. We are the C++, we are the most paid. That's great for us. Okay. Uh, uh, Stack Overflow ranks C++11 as the second most loved technology. Okay, so everything is, is, is good for C++. So I would say that C++, C++ is a, a solid building. Okay, so skyscraper is going to be there. This is actually what's going to happen to that skyscraper. Do you, can you guess who, who's that? Yeah, it's Rust. And why do I think, I actually don't, don't think that, but uh, well, for the sake of, of thought, uh, why do I think that? Because you here are not the average C++ coders. You are just one in 1,000 or 10,000 uh, developers. You are the top. But uh, most C++ coders out there, they don't care that much about functional programming. They, they don't know a word about template meta programming. They, they can barely do templates. Okay? So they are actually writing what uh, my colleague Manu, Manu Sanchez called Java++. It's something like this. Yeah, it happens. It happens in many companies. And those companies, they are releasing products. They are selling uh, their products, their C++. And maybe the quality is, 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 is crappy. It's not that good, but they, they are doing business. And they have uh, hundreds, thousands of developers inside doing this, this code. So something like Rust that is much safer for the average coder uh, has, has a lot of potential. They are building uh, on top of LLVM. So they are going to take off the, all the knowledge of uh, optimization and things about compilers, and they will be able to, to quickly uh, evolve the language without all the, um, you know, uh, having to look back and the backwards compatibility things. So they will be able to, to evolve very, very, very fast and get a very good performance for a lot of cases. And something, uh, at some point, companies will realize that and will probably move. Um, there is a killer feature here, is that it comes with a uh, dependency manager. Inside, uh, it's called Cargo. So developers will just say, I want OpenSSL, I want this, I want that, I want all these libraries, and they will be able to build the same application in any system with any continuous integration very easily, without any trouble at all. So here, actually, it's not uh, my opinion, I, I just uh, an observer here. So I look at the networks, I read blog posts, and I'm concerned because it's the first time in a long time that I, I, I see C++ experienced programmers saying that Rust is, is, uh, is brilliant. And they're going to move, they're going to migrate for the next project, they are going to do it in Rust. So uh, last time I saw that it was in, in Java. 
probably uh, we don't agree that that movement, but Java probably took a lot of uh, average C++ coders because of their run everywhere uh, paradigm. Okay, so I think Rust has uh, actually some potential to to repeat the the thing. Actually, this is just full for thought. Okay, so if you, if you want, for example, more uh, ideas about this this debate here. Uh, I think this this is a blog post uh, that was released yesterday or the day before, so it's pretty new. It's uh, much more developed uh, why uh, C and C++ will never die. And criticizing Rust language and the weaknesses, it, it has also weaknesses. But uh, I think it's an interesting debate here. So what uh, actually I, I want to, to say here is that um, the best thing the killer feature uh, is, uh, for C++ in the future, sorry, is not ranges, is not concept slides, is not anything we are talking about. It's a proper packet or dependency manager. It's the best thing we can do for the language. Okay, a step probably in modules is going to be also uh, as, as killer as, as a packet manager, of course. So, uh, what would be my, eh, excuse me. Someone made the point that dependency managers and package managers have, have burned people, not necessarily in C++, but just in general, burned people so badly that whatever, and we were talking about the need, this the same set of needs, your, your Whatever is done to solve it should be called, and I think it was Chandler suggested, maybe, or I suggested, installation, an, an installer. You know, that, that, that we need to be a little careful there that the word we choose doesn't bring a lot of unwanted baggage. Yeah, so the point there is to repeat for, for the video is that. Uh, the, the wording we use for dependency managers and packet managers is, is to be clear what we are actually installed, what we should be I say, managed for projects, for developers, for DevOps, for sysadmins. I think there are a lot of things to be taken into, into account here. It's more or less that, that the point. Yeah, that's totally true. Yeah. So my, my wish list for uh, such a uh, tool would be to be exactly the same in all operating systems and platforms. Uh, you will have to be able to manage the dependencies per project and change versions in every different project. Uh, of course, with the typical dependency management, conflict resolutions, dependency overriding. Um, it should be very simple to publish new things. So you, you should be able to build your own library and publish uh, without moderation in five minutes, just like other Maybe uh, maybe Central is not that, that good, and you can you can spend maybe two days until you, you get your artifact in Maven Central, but you can r then run Nexus and and you will publish it uh, in five minutes. Okay, so it should be very easy. Uh, of course, private uh, artifacts should be allowed. Uh, we want such system to build from source, but if the binaries are pre-compiled and they are compatible with your setup, then use, the, of course, the, the, the binaries if, if you want. And a very important, often overlooked issue is the, the statistics and the metrics. We really need to know what is being used. Uh, yesterday, uh, they were talking also about deprecation. How can we decide to deprecate something? Just we need to know if it is being used or not. The only thing we can do is to measure it. Okay, so it's very important for a for a package manager, dependency manager. So the question here is, uh, yeah, excuse me, another question there. Yeah, I was just noticing there in your earlier list of uh, prerequisites. Uh, GitHub provides every single one of those when combined with Travis. So why do you need anything else? So understanding uh, GitHub modules will pull all your dependencies. Uh, Travis will automatically push binaries onto a special branch of GitHub. You just build yeah. all of this, and it will yeah. work. And it already, have, it already runs on all platforms, so why do we need anything more? <laughs> well, you're still using GitHub. Uh, I grant you that a lot of people who see the project using GitHub. Uh, well, why why are you using GitHub? 
<laughs> sure, I mean, there are some projects which aren't, but my point is, is that there is tools already available, ready to go, so why do we need something else? That's what I'm asking. <laughs> yeah, I, the, the question there is, uh, why we need something else uh, about, uh, because we have Git and Git submodels, okay, so we can run with that. Okay, the other languages also have Git and Git submodels. Why are they building their own package managers? So, uh, I, mean, I mean, I'm not saying here uh, that uh, probably that's the good solution and let's go for it, but it's not working. Uh, maybe not 50% uh, of the companies, that they are using Git. A lot of companies, uh, I had a talk a few, uh, a few minutes ago, they are using just subversion, for example. You know, I was asking, so, not to put you down, but to give you, just, I would like to know what, what the actual answer is, because I think that would illuminate your argument. Yeah, and uh, another point here, wow, well, <laughs> I, I, I think another point there is that, um, sorry, is like uh, people actually dislike Git some models. It's not a, a very easy, easy thing to manage. I, I wouldn't say, I, I would say it's, it's a nightmare, uh, properly management of Git some models. I, I wouldn't use them for, for dependency manager, never, sorry. It's, my, it's just my, my, my opinion. No, I think the, the first hand w was there. Can I ask, Mal, well, okay, you're familiar with this package, you say, with this approach. Why is it? Why hasn't it been successful? <laughs> can I answer that? It doesn't uh, work. No, sorry, can I answer that? It doesn't work. Okay. <laughs> so, totally. You know yeah. the diamond dependency hell? Yeah, that's a hell. that with git submodules? It does not work. Oh, yeah. sub module, but why doesn't the, uh, what's the name of this? Yeah. So, so excuse me. Just to, to summarize, for for the sake of the video recording, is uh, the answer is uh, if it works, if it is a solution, why it is not widely uh, adopted by everyone? And also another answer here is that it doesn't work. Really. <laughs> so, <laughs> it, it does not solve the dependency. There is, actually, there is actually an easy solution to that, and that's to use a branch tag to give some modules, and that makes that problem go away. But <laughs> 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 oh, over there. Another comment is that Travis is far from building all the available yes. platforms. I mean, it's yeah. just Linux, right? And yeah, well, it's yeah. very, very limitless also. It's, I mean, come on, seriously? All platforms? <laughs> 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 yeah, but it's not. <laughs> yeah, so there they said that the continuous integration platforms like Travis are, are very limited in the number of, of operating systems they can they can support right right now. Ben? If we're looking at this as a, a package manager rather than a dependency manager just, then I think there's another bullet point which belongs here, which is discovery of packages. Yeah. So you know when I when I'm looking for something to, to do to form up to solve a problem and I fire up apt. It can tell me a bunch of packages which might solve my problem. Yeah. Yeah. So the uh, the question here is that uh, discovery and searching for new packages uh, is also a problem by, by itself. So uh, my point there is is even that a system is distributed and you can use in-house or in cloud or whatever, we need a place, a central place, a central re repository where most of the packages live. So if to uh, precisely to to enable such discovery and such, such tools. Oh, I just want to comment also that oh, I you, 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 sorry. Really sorry. Oh, it, just, it just sounded to me from all this that like Git could be the back end of a package manager. But there's a lot of could, could information be. as a user that you would need to know to use it effectively as a package manager. Yeah. In, in, in other words, um, you, need, hmm. you need a higher level Higher level interface, especially, you know, yeah, but your, your yeah, yeah, I, I agree. So, I think that uh, in uh, the question is that if we could use Git as a backend for this system, I would say yes for the largest part of, of the code. But if you want to solve properly and fast the, the dependency hell, the diamonds, and all that stuff. Uh, that the stuff is better to have the recipes, the things defining uh, the packages, 
somewhere else that is really optimized for computing the dependency GitHub. And then once you have the, your dependency problem, then you retrieve things from, from Git, GitHub and then build things or retrieve the artifacts, the, the build binary. But it's, it's better to have a central place optimized for discovery, optimized for uh, computing the, the dependencies and things like that. So that, that's um, at least my, my opinion here. De Dem, you got a question? Well, I was going to say I use a large central library, CDL, um, and it was almost impossible to try to include with Git submodules. I mean, that just, not, first of all, I broke the code, but even when you do that naively, I mean, I have just a few thousand lines of code, and CDL has a million. So if you were to look at my project, you think of CDL instead of the actual thing which I'm doing, which is causal dynamical triangulation. So just throwing all the files and together with Git just didn't work at all. Yeah, so for the video, uh, he's saying that he's using Seagull and actually trying to use uh, submodules with Seagull. Uh, it doesn't work either, right? Right. Okay. Any other question here? <laughs> <laughs> so I, I was, uh, how many time uh, left, please? Uh, around 10 minutes. 10 minutes, okay. So uh, the question is, can be te technically done? Uh, well. Uh, th there have been other t attempts here. Um, I would say, any, any of you are using any of these technologies here? No. So they are practically dead. Okay. <coughs> so actually, it is a very challenging problem. But we can also send uh, <coughs> rovers to Mars, two of them, and they work. So actually, technology is not a bottleneck here. But I have a, an idea here is that it probably uh, needs a company behind, because it takes a lot of time. Uh, you have to uh, build a nice web page. You have uh, C++ is probably not the best language to develop this tool. So you have to take, uh, for example, Python, Python coders. And Python coders, they are not really willing to build something for C++ because they love Python. So you have to pay them. It's not easy that, that, that yeah, it's not easy that, that they are going to uh, involve in an open source project just for the sake of it. So, uh, yeah, question. Uh, how do you spell it? Sorry. Y O C T O. Y O C T O. Y O C T O. Yeah. Yeah. What? 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 Yeah. And Intel. What? Yeah. So. So, so he's pointed that company has probably a solution for that, and over here they they're saying that they actually they are not solving the, this problem. I mean, it, it is designed to solve a different problem, but it's not the problem that we're talking about. Yeah. 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 Y
even Java uh, employee, they have two, Ant or, or Maven, but it's practically one, Maven, okay? Here we have a problem because we don't have a consensus about the build system we should use. So you get make files, you, you get Visual Studio solutions. Of course, we have CMake, we have SCONS that uh, is not that active. There's a new player here, it's, it's Basil it, it, from Google. It's, uh, but it seems it will not, uh, we are not going to migrate our projects uh, very quickly to, to Basil. Uh, that's my, my, my opinion, even if it is a very interesting project. So what I'm going to show uh, here is uh, the internal metrics. So I will have to kill you <laughs> before. Is uh, I've been working in Bcode for two years, and finally we we managed to start growing from summer. So these are some of our actual internal metrics. We get uh, more downloads here every every month. This is the most important one because uh, this is our actual activity in the servers, and it's uh, growing like a 20% uh, uh, month over month. Uh, so it's, it's quite great. Uh, I, would, I would like to thank you, some of you here, because of your support to, to Bcode. Uh, so thank you very much. So the final result is that uh, we have been able to accelerate our growth to up to 3,500 uh, 3, uh, users. Okay. Uh, it seems cool, but it, it isn't. It isn't, because uh, we have 4 million developers outside. So what is happening here? Yesterday I gave a talk about Bico Dependency Manager, and there were less people than today. So why are we here ranting about the lack of a dependency manager? I talked yesterday about the dependency manager, and you didn't, you didn't come to my talk. So it's actually something uh, happening here. Uh, I can leave the, the fact that Bico is not good enough. Probably it isn't. Uh, but it's also true that I will not give, give up. So I will keep trying. So our next proposal is uh, an actual package manager that uh, um, addresses the, the current limitations of, of B-code. And it's called code name packet. If any other suggestion about the name, I would be glad to receive. It's going to be distributed. It's going to be full stack open source from the beginning. So you will be able to, to uh, host your own in-house server. You will get the, the backend for storage of practically everything from Git and GitHub. Okay. Um, and it is uh, kind of based on Homebrew. Okay, this is going to be a recipe, not in, in Ruby, but in, in Python. You will get uh, like uh, conditional dependencies, you will get parameterization, and it will be a place when you will have the, the recipe and you will have all the artifacts for any uh, possible build setting. But they are connected to recipe, so you can actually explore, navigate, and know which recipe has, has those things there. And of course, you will be able to, if you want to, you would be able to contribute with your own build. So you can build in your machine, uh, upload to the system, and then uh, do a kind of pull request. So they, if they origin out or want to validate your, your build, probably he can. You will get uh, something like the transitive dependencies, conflict resolution to solve the, that, that dependency hell. Finally, something that uh, I, my, uh, my main goal here is to convince uh, Robert, uh, Robert Remy that he's wrong. And, and the best thing uh, to release Boost and, and to work on Boost and to modularize Boost and to deprecate things would be to have a proper package manager. So I hope uh, we, can, we can do it. So uh, yesterday, when, just to finish, when, when he uh, asked for, for us to volunteer one day to, to Boost and to the library incubator, I didn't raise my hand because, <coughs> sorry, because after all, we are uh, six people, seven people, working full day, every day, to build these things. And we are risking a lot uh, on it. We love to do it in C++, we are doing it in Python, okay? And if we fail, uh, we are going to, the company will die, and of course we will lose uh, our jobs. So, uh, what I say here is that uh, we are still doing that. Because we think it's the best thing we can do for the C++, uh, especially C++ community. So, uh, thank you very much, and if you have any questions, Eric. So you had said that um, that maybe B code isn't uh, enough, and you want uh, this other thing. It, it, uh, it is not enough. What do you see uh, is the problem that uh, is not currently being addressed by B code? Yeah. So the question is uh, by Eric is that. Uh, why is the, are we launching a new product? Uh, is Bcode uh, not enough? 
And yes, the answer is it is not enough. Uh, we, have, uh, we are lucky that we have active users and they are giving us a lot of feedback. And especially when you want to manage a, a large project, let's, let's say uh, OpenCV, let's say Boost, let, let's say Qt, let's say Seagull, for example, you have a problem because uh, we are actually um, like um, affecting the build system. We are uh, like uh, creating our own CMake stuff and everything. And there are projects that they will not migrate to CMake. They have their own build, maybe rec files, whatever. Uh, so there is kind of a stopper here of adoption for big libraries. Uh, of course, we build everything from source, so we cannot uh, cache uh, binaries there. So if you have a big project, it's going to be a, a pain. If you don't do a B clean there, uh, you will have to rebuild from scratch. And uh, while well, actually many people just want the binary active parts, they know OpenCV built uh, is going to work, so they, they don't want to, to build it again. So uh, actually, yes, there are limitations in the current um, state of P-code. A uh, packet uh, or packet or whatever name will we'll solve them and then we'll have a roadmap to integrate both uh, so we get the good things of Bcode, we get the good things of Packet and you will have like a quick prototyping system like this Bcode for developing uh, small libraries and prototyping and you know uh, just playing uh, for, for developing new things from scratch and then we, we will have Packet, packet to, to address the like real production uh, requirements and being able to, to depend on pre-compiled bulls in uh, any platform and things like that. Thank you. Just, I think to me this idea of having a pre-compiled, let's say, boost, you know, you can see the, you know, the number of targets, the number of like 32, you know, 64 bit debug release, you know, throwing, like if you move to mobile embedded, throwing like soft float hard, you know, different ARM CPUs. I mean, you're looking like a like a hundred precompiled binaries of boost easily. Yeah. So, yeah. So, so what's the problem? Let, let, let's store one hundred precompiled uh, uh, artifacts. Why not? But if, it, if it's a thousand or ten thousand, I can probably come up with like a thousand. Uh, actually, yeah. Th this is a long tail. So for 90% uh, of the projects, you will be fine with uh, five builds of Boost. And of course, here the, the key here is we will, uh, so we will define some settings with, and some, some options. Uh, if your options and, and your settings do not match what is pre-built, you are going to build it in your machine with that settings. So probably having like a several builds is enough. And if you have your specific options, a uh, strange one, it will build from scratch. So there's no problem here. And actually, if you want uh, to build a uh, hundred different artifacts for, for Boost and upload them, a uh, storage is quite cheap. So I think there's actually no problem of storing 100 uh, different artifacts from, from the same library. Yeah, the, the, the challenge here is actually have a system that uh, manage this uh, variability in a consistent way. So the mapping from this recipe to these artifacts is, is the, the thing that should be uh, understandable, should be easy to be done, to be defined this, the way we handle these options and then compile settings like the, your Visual Studio, your operating system and th that stuff. And how do you map them to, to these artifacts automatically? Is, that's the key of the, of the problem. Yeah, two of them, sorry, you. Just, so just to confirm, if I understand what you want from packet is that to do what Brew does, yeah. cross-platform. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But as a design and an architecture, you are happy with what Brew does. Yeah, but, but Brew, Brew is a, a brilliant work. Yeah, I, I like Brew. Okay. I like Brew. Uh, there are, uh, I mean, we can do better with uh, the dependency things. Brew, actually, uh, dependency manager is not that good. It's good for first level dependencies or things like that. So we will add, of course, the multi-platform, the storage uh, without moderation for free for open source projects, and we will have the better dependency uh, management. Yeah. How to approach uh, distribution uh, maintainers so that they do not repeat your work? Like there are Python packagers, LaTeX packagers, and you, if you install Debian or Fedora, the guys at Debian or Fedora repeated the work and they offer their own way of selecting Python or LaTeX package or perhaps yeah. 
So not only they are repeating the work, but across distributions, people are repeating the work again. Yeah. So the question here is that uh, actually people is repeating their work, but not, not only in uh, Linux distributions, for example, but also inside the companies. This is a, a problem that is solved in every company, and they have something similar to this, with their own scripts and everything is custom made inside the company. So I think it's time so we can standardize, and, and it's the same to release in any distribution in Windows, in, in Mac, it can be done. So yeah, uh, I'm aware that they are repeating the same problem. So what you are uh, asking is, we have a problem of, of marketing. How do we approach those people and, and conv convince them that this should be the way uh, to do it? So probably the homebrew community has some, some key points about that because yeah, uh, we have a lot, a lot to, to learn from the, from the brew community. Debian's package manager has coexisted with you know, all the languages that are package managers for a long time. You're never going to get to a world where Debian's going to, you know, be like, okay, we'll just distribute these things not using our package manager. OSs are going to have package managers, and languages are going to have package managers. And yeah. There's going to be overlap between them, but. But well, especially in the case of Debian, so the build process is you call Debian control. Yeah. And. Whether you use a recipe like that or a make file, that doesn't matter for the building of the yeah. Debian package. Yeah. I mean, I'm not sure whether this. I'm not sure whether it makes it life easier for Debian developers or harder. Mm -hmm. but it's no, I, 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 I would say here that they are uh, talking about the overlapping of such a system with uh, operating system like the Debian dev packages. There, there will be always an overlap. We will have to see how this uh, evolves. For example, if, if you use this system, and this system is actually building so, such <coughs> artifacts, there is no reason that we, can, we cannot automate uh, conversion of this artifact to a Debian package, okay. for example. There's nothing wrong with overlap, too. I mean, no, no. Well, yeah. Very different yeah, uh, actually, actually, if you want, you, you, you can run here an uh, APT get if you want for some, some dependencies. So this is a Python script, so, so you can do it. No. It's just per project. Yeah, it's, 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 it's like, yeah, of course, it is not system wide. It is like a seller of Homebrew. You, get, you can get as many uh, versions of the library, all of them in a place, and you will get the, the, the folder when, when the artifact is. If you want to install system wide, do it. But uh, it's for developers, and you will have a seller, you will have storage there when the, these artifacts will, will live. Yeah. So, for example, if you're on LTS version of Ubuntu, um, in the worst case, you'll have a two years old system or more. It yeah. take time to migrate. So, your version of Boost or whatever will be yeah. two and a half years old. Do I have to repeat your question or do you have a microphone there? Uh, <laughs> Yeah, the, the problem with uh, OS uh, package managers is that they, they can become uh, old very fast. And for example, yeah, in Ubuntu you have CMake uh, 2.8 and we are in, in CMake 3. So uh, everybody of us, if we want a, a modern system, we just have to manage ourselves to, to find a, a modern package. So yeah, that, that's a problem. That's why uh, we developers, we want something that we can rely on the latest ver version in the first minute. So yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> uh, nothing, crowd knowledge. I mean, we, we had some discussion there, and we uh, someone someone submitted like uh, 100 possible names that they were free domains, and people people yeah, you know the dot com and the domain parking nightmare, and and many we submitted an, uh, a poll to like uh, 100 uh, friends developers, and they vote, and, and we choose the the. The biggest one, and then we realize, okay, it's like a bee. Bee is a, like a collaborative uh, animal. It's kind of cute, so let's go for a bee. But, <laughs> you know that that kind of. Uh, <laughs> I don't care. I'm not a developer. Uh, I, I'm very unlucky. I was the CTO, and I am running also CEO, and I also I dislike it very very, very much. I don't like marketing, and so I, I would love not to think about naming, marketing, and trademarks and everything. Yeah, but that is crowd knowledge. 
I would be curious to hear about uh, from other people about your choice of language, like because I think it would be more favorable to choose C plus um, plus, like to get more uh, contributions from this yep. community. This, for example. For 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 what you're planning here, yes. Yeah. For your packets. For this, for example. Managing this in, in Python is, is, is like this. You can write a recipe in Python, you dy dynamic uh, load it, and you can play with... Uh, actually, this is a dictionary, but if you want to process, you want to propagate options, for example, uh, downstream to upstream libraries, dependencies, you have to convert this to something. So uh, This in Python, you can do it on the fly. Uh, it's, 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 it's so damn simple. Uh, it, it will take me like uh, 10 times more time to do the same. We have a uh, first initial version. Uh, I think 10, 10, 10 times more to, the, to build the same functionality in C++. In C++. That's my estimation. And I, I did a lot of C++ in the past, and, and I know a little bit of Python now. So 10 times more. That's a fact. Is exactly the same thing. It's, you, you use Python to do it because Python can look very uh, declarative. Yeah. It's just here's here's some some uh, some maps and, and structures and stuff like that. But then it's like when you have something, you can suddenly put ifs and whiles and do processing in it. But most of the structure of it is just it's a declarative language. Yeah. Um, and if you were going to do something, try to tackle this in C plus plus. The first thing you would do is write an embedded language yeah. and do it. And it's like there's already one, just use it. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, I, I just, there's a ton of C++ tools that are written in Python. I think a ton of C++, I mean, at least here, a ton of the sort of the people who would contribute to something like this, they're, we've all used Python in this room, I'm sure. Yeah, we have a, like an estimation, and we, we more or less estimate that uh, more than 50% of the C++ developers would be quite comfortable uh, with Python and even contributing to, the, to an open source project like in Python. Uh, but maybe they are not uh, very expert Python developers, but they will be fine contributing yeah, to that. I would also say that it's probably their first choice for yeah. a scripting language. Yeah. Python is the scripting language. For, for, for C++ developers, <laughs> definitely. Yeah. Louis? Did you consider Ruby? Sorry? Did you consider Ruby? Yeah, of course, because Ruby is written in, in Ruby. But if you check uh, language trends, uh, Ruby is going like this and Python is going like that. So, and actually the, the C++ community is, is more keen on, on, on Python. So uh, the discussion was like 10 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's just anything that's, not Python, anything that's not Python, it's just, you know, again, I'm sure everybody in this room has written something in Python. Uh, hey, let, let's do who, who prefers Python? Who prefers uh, Ruby? To what? To what? Uh, uh, Python versus Ruby. Just, well, just like the first thing that you go to when you scroll. Yeah. Not really mine, but I just, I just think that like yeah, the main specific language within Ruby might look a bit nicer. But it's just you know, I, I can Python in Ruby. I don't care. Uh, the problem is it's not there actually in the language. So yeah. Have you thought about doing the like Docker or Rocket images? Yeah, we have some Docker uh, fans in the office, but no, okay. not not at, the, at this moment. No. You <laughs> Any other question? No. Then uh, thank you very much for your attendance and your support. Thank you. <laughs>